It is the soul that has to grow. How is that going to take place? How to feed the soul so that it can grow? Right now, this moment, any moment, this moment, everybody exactly like that, like that here, this moment, as you are being, being and Searching, aren't you, at the same moment? Now, I can tell, I can feel. The impossible paradox of doing something for yourself and being in yourself can happen. It is happening in the room now. Isn't it? It's like the almost the opposite of the goose meditation of having the arms in the air. The desire to move is itself still, and being still with yourself is a movement. Now, I ask you, where is the journey of the soul taking place right now in you? And most of you, if not all of you, to some extent, immediately fell towards the path that the soul takes. It was an active happening, and yet a tremendous stillness. That is the trick. Of course, there are thousands upon thousands of situations where it will not be just sitting still together with other explorers, listening to a few words, be in the midst of hectic activity. But the same principle can be brought to bear. Because the journey of the soul is a kind of distillation Distillation is the process whereby you try and extract an essence and then the essence of the essence and then the essence of that essence. Refining, refining, purifying until the very liquid gold is left. And that process of refinement has to be done not only when you're sitting in meditation, but when you're consumed with jealousy, anger, envy, despair, sadness, frustration, lossless. The process is fundamentally the same as it is this moment. It is again the meeting of the opposites of a total allowing in yourself of what is happening. And often, if you use our penetration level meditation, often 
as well as that, a containment, a kind of containment. Of course, it, the waves of the energy flow out in all directions. But you don't direct it in an attack against somebody. There is no need. Maybe sometimes just to let some steam out if you can't diffuse it. But the whole working with energy is an attempt to feed the soul. There is just one quotation I would like to pass on to you from the ancient Hindu scriptures. There is only one way to gain salvation, adequate knowledge of the Spirit. He who knows the Atman, which is the inner spirit, he who knows the Atman, crosses over. Crosses over. The method is step by step. Refining, refining, penetrating the spirit. Penetrating through all the obstacles. Here's a Second quotation from a modern Hindu master, he recently died. To get rid of all matter, gross and fine, is the quest. The matter is what we might call the stuff. He says, get rid of it. I said, penetrate it. Even as you're penetrating it, you can feel underneath the spirit. That's another way of saying keep one eye on it, Paul. But more than keeping an eye on it, you can feel the spirit. Because that also is an aspect of ourselves. You feel the spirit underneath and you penetrate what is not yet spirit. In all situations. If you see that this moment, you see that if you go off and start to think too much about what is happening, you create more stuff. Even if you are, in a way, intelligently thinking about the problem, then you're not creating such dense stuff, but it is still stuff. And if you stay with it on the level that I call an energy happening, you are not creating any more stuff. You're allowing that the energy waves of the energy happening to roll through you and out of you. And if you do that, you run in the terms of this teacher, be getting rid of it. And at the same time as you are removing the gross stuff, You are feeding the soul, not only reaching out for it. In a way, straining towards it. Like the picture of the Michelangelo has painted in the Sistine Chapel. 
with Adam, with his hand outstretched to God. A symbol of the meeting of heaven and earth, the separation and the reunion, or the maintaining of the connection despite the separation. I think of touch, straining, enemies, reaching out, not wanting to let go of the divine and yet being sent on this journey in the earth. When one really meditates consciously, and to with totality, with eagerness to find this joy within us, this glory, but this sense of for the truth. When it's clearing the matter away and the very longing becomes a kind of resonance, slightly adulterated, of course, but nevertheless close and encouraging that the connection to ma be made between one centre of operation, as it is, and one soul. Bringing the two hands together symbolically, one's hand, two hands, the working hand, and the hand that represents the participation in the cosmic reality. And whilst one is distracted naturally in life into taking other sorts of journeys, work journeys, emotional journeys, achievement journeys. Small diversions on lighting them. One has to come to the point in oneself where something in oneself lack the needle of a compass is always pointing towards the thread that is the movement of the soul. Not just through life, but through all time. So good, Jeff was right. One has to grow one's own soul. It's another way of saying one has to find it and walk with it. And that's the same thing seen from the point of view of the work. One has to grow it. From the point of view of the other hand, is in the cosmic reality, there is nothing to be done but to be reunited with that hand totally, but from the point of view of the journey, there is active work to be done in the form of meditation, refinement, distillation, penetration of matter, gross and subtle. And the key is this that I asked you at the beginning. 
right now, where is the path that your soul is on? This instant, you can feel it, you know how to, each one of you. Another way of putting it is, as the line is in one of the songs, flush with the deepest thing you know. If you keep going, to the deepest thing you know. That's nothing to do with knowledge, it's to do with what you can perceive in your reality at any moment. You can perceive thinking, you can perceive feelings, sensations, vibrations, sounds, images, and so on. And at each instant, what is the deepest thing? If it's thinking, then think. If it's anger, then feel the anger. That is penetrating the gross matter. These are gross things, but they are there if they seem to be the most important. Then be flush with them. If they're not, then be flush with something that may be beyond them. Like a stillness, a silence, an emptiness. Or even it could be a direction, a falling, a penetration. Then if that's the deepest thing, that movement somewhere, in some direction, then be flush with it. Give your energy to it, center yourself there while it is possible. And the more that you do that, my friends, I assure you, and everybody here in a way is a beginner, because it takes a long time. The more you do it, the more it becomes instinctive. The more it goes on willy-nilly. Even if you become distracted, you look back and you find in your absence the movement through the matter grows unsubtle has continued, maybe with not such fullness, but it will have gone on. Then the whole distraction of judging yourself can be dropped. You may know that this is not the perfect virtue for you, this anger, this jealousy, this hurt, this lostness. But you do not judge it, you say it is a happening. And I will go into it and find the deepest thing in it that I can find. And if I do that, doing that is such a meditative activity that you immediately start being in touch with something even beyond the deepest thing that you know. Let us say you get in touch with the next layer by penetrating one layer so totally, so fully, so determinedly, it awakens, in a way, the next layer underneath, as if you have one hand already, waiting for the second active poking hand to penetrate, to make that ready for the next layer and its penetration. And then you begin to see that this aliveness, this energy, which you are in fact transforming, because all these layers are different forms of the same energy only, 
that in doing this, you are discovering that the essence is in everything. In jealousy as much as in love. In restlessness as much as in stillness. In lostness as much as in celebration. Celebration is to feel full of divine energy. Lostness is to feel the absence of divine energy. If you want to put it into words, so they're kind of opposites. And yet, in this way, you see that they are both expressions of something beyond them both. And then you see you can use anything for the journey of the soul. Nothing is outside the game, the play, the work. And it couldn't be more true, what I am saying this morning, it couldn't be more true of anything than it is of a suffering. Suffering is such a release of dynamic energy that if you know how to live with it, Accept it. Somehow ride it. It can take you great distances. You could almost define something as the release of a volcano of energy. so much that it feels unpredictable and therefore painful. The loss of a loved one, either through a death or through an ending of love for you. A feeling of worthlessness. A feeling of being cut off from other people. Or from life. The feeling of being trapped inside yourself and hearing the same thoughts bump and acting around endlessly, eternally. And your response to suddenly seeing that sufferings. But a suffering, in a way, is the end of something. You have seen something. You have experienced something. An event has happened at the end of a relationship. Great energy is released in something. It is the door to the next layer. If you let it wash over you and at the same time join forces with it, 
suffering is often a great blessing. However little it might seem like it sometimes, it is always a great blessing. And to write it, not only brings a release, but also a tremendous developing strength. You have survived. You are greater than that suffering. You have passed the kind of test that the cosmos has set you. And what is more, you are not back where you started, as many people are. Because they don't learn the lesson of the suffering, and they don't use it to ride through a level to a new level. Suffering probably will disappear anyway in time, most mental and emotional anguish disappears in time. But you have not conquered it. If time has done it for you. Just being with it as it washes over you. Being with it at its deepest level. And you will come out one day, one moment, refreshed and laughing and celebrating and leaving it completely behind. You know that you must have experienced it. And walk on. Leave it behind and walk on. And if there are reverberations, as there might be, let there be reverberations. But don't dwell on it. Or if you do, if you cannot help returning to it, that it's stronger than anything else that seems to be around. That's still the deepest thing we know. Then go into it again. But there's an energy happening. There's still energy left in it for you. Then, if that's the strongest wave, then go into it. And don't judge yourself for hanging on to it. It may be still simply there and great in your life. Go back into it. Let it wash, but on an energy level, not on a thought level, not on an analysis level. And suddenly you will find that you can use it. And then if you find you can use it, you will begin to see it as a gift. If you can use something, then it is a gift. If it is just a nuisance, then it seems like a punishment. You can use it if you know how to. You can extract the essence of it, because the essence of that suffering is in a way the same as the essence of love and joy. It doesn't look like it, but it is. And then you begin to see that in a way energy, which is one of the early lessons in energy work, doesn't really have a name unless you give it a name. It has a quality, but it does not have a name. And qualities can change, but it's not so easy for names to change. They become 
square, cubic. The moment you give a shape to this affair, and a form, and a word, and a statement, it not only becomes fixed as a mood that with a particular name, it becomes fixed on you. It shows in your face, in your movements, in the look in your eyes, the expression of your mouth. You reflect this thing that you say is in you, and you give it a name. It takes on a reality. You take on a corresponding reality. You are seen then as a sad person, an angry person, a jealous person, a suffering person, a self-pity person. Because you have brought back your experience in a concrete form. So we look at somebody's face today and you will see what happened to them yesterday. Or the day before. But if you don't give it a name, you have the experiences, but for you it remains flowing, dynamic, active in movement, changeable, mutable. Then how can it come upon your face since it's not the same? Today is it was yesterday, and tomorrow will be different once again. At most it will be a fleeting expression, because that's what it is for you, a fleeting happening. And then you are free of anything in particular. And then you don't have to try and force life to conform to what you think you want because you can deal with any experience and find its essence and use it for the journey to essence, to the soul and its path. Now, who is not capable of making such a journey? I didn't say who will and who won't, but who is not capable of making such a journey? I cannot think of any human being, if they wanted to, and set their foot upon the path, who could not make that journey. Everybody has the capacities, maybe not the inclination, maybe not the determination, the patience, the trust, but the capacities are inherent in the human being. And if you carry on with that, you begin after a while to see that the deepest thing that you know is silence, or stillness, or joy, contentment, a high contentment, a feeling of final contentment, or at least dependable contentment. You come to it, you don't in a way aim for it, you don't know what you are aiming for, are you? you're aiming just simply beyond this stuff that is floating around, offering you. You simply keep penetrating, going beyond, refining, getting rid of the end. Demands it. I 
and then you come to what the ancients called the Atlan. And then, he who knows the Atlan crosses over. It's beautiful. You work, you penetrate. You move towards the deepest thing you can find. You begin to feel underneath even the deepest things, like a deep grounding, maybe the ground of being, we can call it. Rumbling, like distant thunder underneath. It's like it's like a rumbling. You could be, and you know you're getting close. And then you fall into something that feels like what I'm talking about this morning. And then you cross over. And then the crossing over happens. You're not actually taking the journey of the crossing over because that's meaningless, because you cannot see the other shore. But suddenly, it seems, it happens by itself. That having come through all the layers, you fall free. Or you turn a somersault. In a perfect somersault. On the other shore, with your arms raised high, incident to the Buddhas of all time. And if things are going tough for you, it is not an accident. It is necessary. One draws, if one is a real seeker, as you all are, one draws what is needed for the penetration to be made. And from that point of view, if you are in a joyful state in your ordinary life, you are no more blessed than the person who is in a miserable and suffering state. It is in each case what is needed in order to get beyond the duality of joyfulness and suffering. So no one, in a way, if you're really a, I say, serious seeker, I don't mean you have to be serious about it, but I mean you're serious about finding the truth. That one has to be serious about, even if the truth itself is a big laugh, you have to be serious about finding it. And if you are, then nothing that is happening to anybody else is although it may look so, any better than what is happening to you. And in fact, if it was happening to you, it would not be so good for you as what is happening to you, because you are drawing what is happening to you, because that is what you need right now, if you are being open and accepting. And the more you are open, the more accepting, the more you will be given what you really need in bigger dollops, because the gods will say, he, she can handle this. And then it will accelerate, and then things will be happening all the time. So fast you won't even be able to give them a name if you want to. Heart will sink, you'll be as high as a kite. You'll feel as if you have no energy. Things will disappear, appear again. 
until you learn how to not only penetrate this whatever it is, but slowly to be beyond them all. A flickering of instance that becomes a continuity. The center of each instance, or many instants, will suddenly become connected. And then there is no coming and no going. Although much might be happening, not only around you, but in you, or in aspects of you. Tears, tiredness, fear, and it will be just be washing over the rocks that you left behind when you fell into the sea. And you will not identify that you will be conscious of the happening. You will not condemn yourself. You will not judge yourself. You will not judge anything. It will be incidents, energy happenings. This is the dynamic teaching we have. It is nothing abstract or theoretical about it. Everything that I have said this morning can be applied at any moment. It has to be. In your own way, you understand I have used my words. I'm pointing at something. You may have totally different words. But something of the sort is the work here. And it is not only a communal work to create an energy field in which this can happen, it is absolutely an individual work. Because he undertakes the work, we're alive, and he do that. But even with help of the energy field, the energy field is an encouragement like the hand that goes underneath the working hand. And sets up an attractive energy. So you're both putting yourself deeper and moving deep at the same time. The energy field is doing that too. It joins with that part of you. That is drawing yourself down deeper, refining yourself, penetrating yourself. But alone, it will not manage. So it's absolutely an individual work, as well as an energy field growth that is happening. And you have all the tools that you need. And the environment in which to use the tools is simply your life. It is the same wherever you are, whatever you are doing. It may be harder to remember some where in some situations, but that does not change the fact that it is essentially the same. There is only one way to gain salvation, adequate knowledge of the Spirit, even as the Atman crosses over. <laughs>